Listen to man, listen to God, not man. Some of the reasons why we're not disciplined is because we're taking instructions from the wrong place. We're so enamored with our professors. We're so enamored with the big boss. We're so enamored with the guy with a scat pack. We're so enamored with the guy with the cars in the house. And we'll take cues from him. We'll go listen to what he say his dad was. We'll go listen to what he, how he came up. And we'll take that on for our life instead of what God is trying to give us. Listen to God now, man. Watch this. Samuel chapter 10, verse 8. Just give me verse 8. Then go down to Gilgal. Ahead of me, I will join you there to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings. You must wait for seven days until I arrive and give you further instructions. Samuel is talking to Saul. Saul is the first king. He says, go there. Wait for me seven days. Don't do anything. We're going we're gonna to sacrifice burnt offerings and peace offerings. Wait. Okay, go to 1 Samuel chapter 13, verses 7. I'm in the NLT. 1 Samuel 13, 7. Meanwhile, Saul stayed at Gilgal. And his men were trembling with fear. Saul waited for, there for seven days for Samuel, as Samuel had instructed him earlier. But Samuel didn't come, so Saul realized his troops were rapidly slipping away. So he demanded, bring me the burnt offerings and the peace offerings. And Saul sacrificed the burnt offerings for himself. Was that what the man of God told him to do? What happened? He was so busy looking at what the crew was doing. They slipping away. Instead of putting his trust in God, he was putting his trust in troops. And when he seen them slipping away, he said, bring them to me. Let, me. let me satisfy these men so they don't leave me. I'm going to tell y'all right now, y'all will not, like me or not, see me compromise what God has told me to do to keep one of y'all in this building or keep y'all around. I don't care if you're the biggest tither, bah. I will not compromise when God says do something, set something to appease anyone. And so you are going to hate me or love me for it. But if God said this is how it go, that's how it's going to go. I'm not going to taint it. I'm not going to temper with it. I'm not going to mess with it. That's what it is. I'm not, I, Saul was a coward. He was so busy looking at the men and them leaving, and he didn't want to be alone. He didn't want to be stuck there with a few when he knew with his armies, and he had just had a defeat. He just had, uh, he just had a victory. I mean, why are you, God is told, why are you doing this, Saul? Because you're so busy looking at men except God. You're so busy following what, they're, what they need and what they want, trying to appease them instead of satisfying what God has told you to do. What if God told you the church is only supposed to be five people? You're so busy trying to keep people and do all this stuff. What if he told you that? And I, I, I've literally, as a pastor, had to check myself before because I was about to compromise and waver because that's what the people I thought the people wanted. I said, well, if we're going to be in my back of my house again in the living room with six people, so be it. But if that's what God has said do, that's exactly what he said do. And I can't compromise because for one reason, y'all, this is not my church. This is his. At least it's supposed to be, right? It's supposed, it's, we call it the house of, and yet we come in here and we make it our own little personal sanctuary. God said, this is my house and this is to be holy. And part of that is keep your finger out the Kool-Aid, Calvin. I understand the pressure as a pastor. I understand the pressure as a leader. Sometimes you feel like you're not, nothing's happening because people are not showing or people are not participating or people are not serving. But I'm sorry, maybe that's just what God wants. But I will be obedient. You won't, I'm not Saul in this one. Watch this. He says, just as Saul was finishing with the burnt offering, Samuel arrived. Saul went out to meet and welcomed him, but Samuel said, what, what is this you have done? He says, Saul replied, I saw my men scattering from me. And you didn't arrive when you said you would. And the Philistines are in Michmash, ready for battle. So he's like, I got to do this battle. My men leaving. And I didn't want to battle by myself. So I just started doing it what I had to do because my men were leaving. He said, bro, what have you done? What if God wanted them to leave? What if one of the ones that was going to leave was the one that was betraying you? God is sovereign. He always has a plan. And we will only shut up and obey him and be disciplined. Watch what happens to Saul. I see my man scattered for me, so I reacted to them instead of obeying what the word of the Lord was. Verse 12. So I said, the Philistines are ready to march against, uh, against us at Gilgal, and I haven't even asked the Lord for the Lord's help. You know, we do this. We always try to make it spiritual. I had to get before the Lord because I seen what was up against me. He already told you what to do. He already gave you specific instructions. Don't try to say, well, I had to seek the Lord. You know, we try to get religion spiritual real quick. When we, when we don't want to be obedient and, and, and we don't want to be a, a disciplined, we try to get spiritual. When we ain't study none and we want to come up in the pulpit, we get religious real quick. 
when we wasn't disciplined enough to get in the word. Like we always want to get really religious and spiritual to try to facade our lack of discipline. Watch this. Watch this. I'm going to prove it to you. I ain't making this up. He says, he says, and I haven't even asked the Lord for help. So I felt compelled. That was, that was in the other words. That was like, then the Lord showed me and told me to offer the burnt offerings for myself before you came. He says in verse 2, how foolish, Saul exclaimed. You have not kept the command of the Lord your God gave you. Remember, when you discipline, discipline always produce obedience. Obedience will give you vision. He says, the Lord, he says, you have not kept the command of the Lord your God gave you. you had, had you kept it, the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. We would not be over here screaming, the tribe of David, from the line of David. Jesus coming, our Messiah is coming. We would be saying, the Messiah is coming from the line of Saul. Because you wouldn't have discipline. You was paying attention to men over God. You was paying attention to Instagram over God. You was paying attention to what Cardi B, whoever y'all listen to now, was doing, except for God. He said, I would have established your kingdom forever. I had a divine destiny for you. He said, but here we go in verse 14. But now your kingdom must end. For the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. He said, I will not pick another man like you again. I want one after my heart. Who his, his heart, he's going to seek out my heart. He's going to have the same heart for the people that I have. He says, I, and it's funny how, he says, watch this. Your kingdom must end for the Lord has sought out a man after his own heart. The Lord has already appointed him. It don't take no time. If God, God, listen, God, the work going to get done one way or another. Either you're going to submit and let God use your life or he'll use somebody else. Either you're going to line up and do it or he'll use somebody else. And God said, now, I'm not punishing you, but what I have for you must end. Not because I did anything. You didn't obey. You kept hearing the word and wouldn't change. So now, consequence, we must live discipline so we don't receive God's discipline. That's what he's saying here. Now, because you didn't obey, this is what has to happen. I can't have a man like you over my people. I would have established you forever if you could have just been disciplined. If you could have just did what you were supposed to do, Saul. While she says, the Lord has already appointed him to be the leader of his people because you have not kept the Lord's command. He didn't say because God got tired of you today. He said because you have not kept the command. That's why he says what we just read, rid yourself. You have to do the work. Get rid of her number. But listen, when I got married, I'm going to make this very plain. I was the whole of hoes before I was married. I, that was my thing, women and money. And when I became a Christian, I said, I'm going to get married and walk with Christ. You know what I had to do? I was blocking numbers, deleting numbers. We don't, don't, we don't mind remember no numbers by heart. I was unfriending, blocking. I was doing everything. I took my passwords, gave them all to my wife. Right now, she can get on her phone and switch profiles right to mine. I did everything I could to, to, to prevent me from falling back. I had to rid myself and deprive myself of that desire, of that lifestyle, because I lived it for so long. Sometimes we have to be disciplined. I didn't want to, I'm like, I'm losing out with what God wants for me. I'm losing out with what God wants. I have to stop. Sometimes you have to go to extreme measures. I have a porn problem. I got a porn, find an accountability partner. Give them the, how you normally search, give them, give them your methods. Like, hey, bro, I got to be vulnerable with you. Can we have a meeting at lunch? I'm struggling with this thing. I'm going to give you to log into my Google. And I want you to check every morning because normally I, I'm, I'm, I'll try to get up before the kids get up and slide. So can you, I'm going to give you my login. Can you every morning, can you just be my brother and log in at 6 and make sure and, and, or send me a text like, no, uh Sometimes, listen, confess your faults to one another so you may be. Go to your brother and find accountability. Open up. And I know you don't want nobody to know that you, you trash, but trust me, he's trash too. Y'all all dealing with something. Open up. You, you will not live a disciplined life if you don't do this. You cannot battle this by yourself. This boy just got my heart. He's just my soft spot. I don't want to do it, but he just, Arr! sometimes, deprive yourself. Delete him, block him, fight him, do whatever it takes. I hate you. Get it, whatever it takes, because I went to extreme measures, because I was so hell-bent on pleasing God and honoring my wife that I'm like, whatever it takes, whatever I got to do. Whatever it takes, I'm going to do it. I said, and, and my wife was not the type that makes a bunch of demands. So I'm like, I'm going to do this, baby. I'm going to do this. You don't have to. I'm doing it anyway. It's for me, not you. Like, whatever it takes, you can do this. You can put down the weed. You can do this. Like, you, you, can, you can rid yourselves of it. You can do it if you want to. Watch this last verse, 1 Samuel chapter 15. 
verse 22 and 23. Watch this. Watch what he says here. Now he has to end. He tells him he would establish your kingdom forever, but no, no, I can't do it anymore. Watch what he tells him. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? See, see Saul tried to tell him, I was, I was sacrificing. How could you be mad at me, Lord? I, I, I mean, how, how God going to in my room? I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm one. He said, no, no, no. But Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord? Your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to his voice? I don't care if you put your tithes in. They don't mean you just go live however. He said, do I, would you rather be, do I really want your worship or your obedience? He says, obedience is better than sacrifice, than the sacrifices of rams. He said the King James. What he's saying is what the, what, the, what the teaching here, what the principle here, and what he's trying to get, I'd rather you obey my voice and do what I'm telling you to do than try to worship me, than be disobedient, be, be disobedient and cover it up with a worship front than to live any type of way to come into church and beat the front row down. The loudest one in the church. But you ain't even, you ain't won't even respect your husband. You won't even love your wife, but you full of worship and praise. You full of all, you full of all the spiritual gifts, and, but you won't even do right. He said, is, is, he said, I'd rather you obey what I've told you in my word to do, man of God. I'd rather you obey what I've told you to do, woman of God, rather than try to offer me sacrifice and worship. Which one is better, Saul? Which one is God is demanding from you, Saul? Now watch what he has. He says, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than the offering of fat and ram. I want you to submit to my words. Watch 23, though. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft, and stubbornness is as bad as worshiping, worshiping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, he has rejected you as king. Watch what he's saying here. He said, listen, he said, we always like to talk about that's witchcraft. They're over there worshiping devils. You know he compares your disobedience to that. Every time we know that God clearly says something and we don't do it, it's like witchcraft. We're literally sitting here playing. We're literally, we might as well get your squeegee boards out at that point and get your pentagons out and start humming and mummering or whatever they do. You might as well get your sage out and start going around your house. If you're going to go around your house after God say, uh, don't be a nagging wife and be gentle in spirit, but you're going to go around the house screaming and cussing him out anyway, you might as well get your Ouija board, get your sage out, and just do practice witchcraft. He says, he says, he says, he says, rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubborn as bad as worshiping idols. When y'all be rebellious and, and disrespectful and disobedient, it's as bad as witchcraft. Because you directly know what I've told you to do, and you just refuse. 